In this lesson, we'll cover the basic operation of the software. First, we'll help you get familiar with the layout, then we'll cover how to create new designs, open files, as well as how to merge or import files. Finally, we'll show some helpful features to the program, such as using the grid pattern. To open the Studio application on a PC, locate the desktop icon and double-click or click on the Windows Start menu, select All Programs, GraphTech Studio folder, and then GraphTech Studio. To open the software on a Mac, open the Applications folder and launch GraphTech Studio. Before it starts, the software will search for any updates to Studio. You can either click to update it immediately or just continue. In a moment, we'll show how to change this setting within the preferences of the software application. In this case, we'll just click continue. Once the application is open, we can set the preferences so that it will not check for updates each time we start the program. Preferences are general overall settings of how Studio will operate. We'll be covering the different preference settings throughout the lessons as they apply. To access the preferences in the Windows version, click on the File pull-down menu and select Preferences. To access the preferences in the Mac version, click on the GraphTech Studio pull-down menu and select Preferences. When there, click on the General Settings, and in the upper right-hand corner, we can choose when we would like to check for updates. Currently, it is set to Always, which will check for updates each time Studio is opened. We can change this so that it checks for updates on a daily basis, weekly basis, or never, which only checks when directed to. We can check for new updates anytime by clicking on the Help pull-down menu, and then clicking Check for Updates. If there is an update, we'll get this message. We can just click on Go to Download Page which will bring us to GraphTech's download website from which the new version of the software can be downloaded. To become familiar with GraphTech Studio, let's briefly examine the layout of the application and each component of the software. We'll discuss the details of functions and tools in later chapters. The application layout is broken into five different sections. At the top are pull-down menus that contain different functions available in GraphTech Studio. They work similarly to pull-down menus found in other Windows or Mac applications in that they are grouped according to functionality. The preview area is where the design is viewed when either designing or cutting. There are two modes to this area. These will be discussed in a moment. The media page, the white space within the preview area, is where the main design is drawn or placed. The side panel just to the right of the preview area will display options for various functions. The buttons surrounding the preview area and side panel, when clicked, will either perform a specific action or is a function and will display options in the side panel. These are generally grouped together by similar functionality. Let's take a closer look at the preview area. As mentioned earlier, here is where your design is created. The white space in the middle is the media page. When in design mode, it is the area in which you create designs. When in the cutting mode, it represents the media on which you will cut the design. This is useful to keep in mind when you make your design. For instance, if you plan to mount it on a sign blank or billboard, the media page while in the design mode can represent the area of the sign blank. This area is used to place or draw objects. However, objects placed or drawn outside the media page in the gray area are invisible, so to speak, when it's time to output the job to the cutter. This makes it convenient when you are designing and perhaps need to place objects off to the side temporarily to use later in the design. At the bottom of the preview area are tabs representing the jobs that are currently open. Because several documents or files can be opened at the same time, this makes it convenient to switch between documents. This feature is especially helpful when wanting to transfer different elements of one design to another.
Located at the top and sides of the studio window are tools that act as buttons. Each tool icon represents a certain function for use when drawing objects, performing file operations, or opening up the side panel with options to a certain function. The tools are grouped together by similar functionality. This tool group at the top left hand side of the screen is for general file management functions, such as creating a new design, opening a design, and saving a design. The group next to it is for either sending the job design to a printer or to your GraphTech cutter. Next to that is a tool group for basic copy, paste, and cut. Next to that are the undo and redo actions commonly found in many programs. The next tool group is for basic zoom in or zoom out functions, enabling a document to be viewed from any range of close up to distant perspectives. These tool groups just below are designed for quick editing, such as grouping and ungrouping objects, selecting objects, duplicating and deleting objects, and so forth. Each tool in the tool groups on the top right will reveal options in the sidebar for that function. For instance, these two tool groups are for changing styles of object attributes, such as fill types and colors, line types and colors or if the objects are text, adjusting text attributes. These tool groups next to the style tool group is for repositioning, rotating, resizing, aligning, and replicating. This tool group is for reshaping, such as welding, applying outline offset, and tracing objects. This group of tools has functions specifically for the preview area when in the design mode. This tool set is for preparing the job design for cutting with regard to tiling, registration mark settings, and more. Whereas the next set of tools has functions for the preview area when in the cutting mode. This tool set is for preparing the job design as well, except it directly affects the cutting. This will become apparent in the lesson Cutting a Design. We will discuss these two modes in a moment. The group of tools along the left hand side of the screen are the drawing tools. These tools range from selecting objects, drawing objects, shapes, lines, and arcs, to creating text directly into your preview area. There are also editing tools such as an eraser tool, as well as a knife tool for slicing objects. Keep in mind that some tools, such as the text tool, will open up options for that tool in the side panel. Finally, at the bottom left corner are two library buttons. These two buttons simply switch between showing the library and showing the preview area. We'll discuss the library and its use in another lesson. Let's go ahead and discuss the two modes of the preview area. As mentioned, the two modes are the design mode and the cutting preview mode or cutting mode. GraphTech Studio will switch between the two modes automatically depending on the operation that has been chosen. For instance, when using a tool to draw objects, the software will switch to the design mode. On the other hand, when using an operation to cut, the preview area will switch to the cutting mode. The design mode is set for designing. When in this mode, the media page becomes a drawing area. As mentioned, the software will switch to this mode when any drawing tools are selected for creating text, shapes, registration marks, or setting a tile pattern. While in this mode, you can imagine it as a drawing board for design. The media page being paper for drawing on, and the surrounding gray area as an area to hold your unused graphics. The cutting preview mode is set for previewing the job prior to cutting. The media page becomes a representation of the media to be cut. It generally obtains this from the cutter currently connected at that moment. It will show the orientation of the job design and how it will lay out on the media that is being used or planning to be used in the cutter. When you are in this mode, it is as if your vantage point is looking directly down on the cutter and media. Let's demonstrate this. Here we have created a very simple design with some text. 
Currently, we are in design mode. We know this because we see the fill of the object. If we click on the Cutter's Window Options button, this will automatically switch the preview area into the cutting mode. When this is done, notice that several things have happened. First, the fill is removed, showing just the outline. The media page has changed to reflect the media size chosen for the cutter you plan to cut the design with. And the job design origin point, represented by the red and blue arrow start point, has moved to a different location. Let's switch back to the design mode by clicking on the page size tool. To start a new drawing document, either select New from the File pull-down menu, or click the New Tool icon. This will open the New Document window with different options for the new drawing, such as the drawing name, the media page size, the orientation of portrait or landscape, and whether registration marks should be used. When the Show Registration Marks checkmark is selected, this tells Studio to place the registration marks in each corner of the media page. Border dictates the distance between the edges of the media page and the registration marks. Once a design is started or completed, you will want to save the design. In fact, you will want to save your design frequently. It's just a good habit. To save a design, click on the File pull-down menu and select Save, or click on the Save Tool icon. Saving a design will save the file under the current name. If it is the first time the drawing is being saved, you will be prompted to enter a name, and then click OK. To save a design to a different name, Click on the Save As option. Once again, you will be prompted to enter a name, and then click OK. Existing drawings and compatible file types can be merged or imported to the current drawing. This is helpful when needing to import a logo or design from a different design. Merging files is similar to opening a file except that it will place or merge the contents of the selected file into the current design. To do this, first click on the File pull-down menu and select Merge. You will then be prompted to navigate to the folder where your drawing file is located. Once there, we can click on the file to be merged and click OK. As mentioned, this will place the contents of the file onto the current preview area. A quicker method would be to drag compatible file types, images, and drawings directly into the current drawing. When working on a design, you may want to adjust the page size. The best way to use the media page is for representing the substrate or surface area you plan to use for the final size. For instance, let's assume that the sign graphics you plan to cut are going to be placed on an area 24 inches by 24 inches you'd then want to set the media page to that size. This way, you'll know that if you keep within the borders, your graphics will fit within the sign area. The media page can be adjusted for both the design mode as well as the cutting preview mode. To adjust the size of the media page in the design mode, click on the Design Page Tool icon. This will display the design page options in the side panel. The size of the page can be set using the width and height sliders. The sliders are for sizing the media visually. Next to the sliders, values can be entered for a more accurate sizing. Just below the sliders are preset choices. These choices range from standard document sizes to sizes taken from cutters that are currently connected to the computer. When a cutter is connected to the computer, the software pulls or gathers size information from the cutter. The poll size will have the drawing area match the media size loaded in the cutter. Keep in mind that resizing the media will not affect the size of the design, even though it may seem like it does. The reason for this is that GraphTech Studio will always grow or shrink the design to keep the size proportional to the media page size. 
Show Matrix Copies will show the copies that are set up in the Matrix window. Show Printable Area will display a thin outline of the media page. This outline border reflects the maximum print area that your printer will allow. Anything outside of this green area will not print. Some of the other basic operations you may already be familiar with because of your experience with other software applications. For instance, the Undo option will undo any action done in the design, and Redo will restore any undos. There are three ways to undo or redo actions. First is by clicking on the Edit pull-down menu and click Undo or Redo. Redo will be grayed out until an undo action has been done. The second way is by clicking on the undo or redo buttons in the tool groups. And the third option is to press Ctrl Z or Command Z on the Mac for undo and press Ctrl Shift Z or Command Shift Z on the Mac to redo an action. As you view your workspace, you may wish to zoom in and get a closer look at the design or parts of a design that may be more difficult to see or work with. The Zoom Tool Group provides several methods of zooming, either to zoom in to get a closer look, or to zoom out, providing an overall broader view of the design. Essentially, the Zoom Tools help to navigate around the preview window. The Pan Tool will pan the job. It works by clicking on the tool, and in the preview window, click, hold, and drag the area it will move the preview window to a different section. The Zoom In tool will zoom into the center of the preview window. The Zoom Out tool will zoom out of the preview window. The Zoom In Selection tool allows a rectangle to be drawn to the area you'd like to zoom into. This works by clicking and dragging the mouse to draw a rectangle of the area you would like to zoom into, then releasing the mouse button and the software will zoom into that area. The Zoom Slider tool enables you to use mouse movement to zoom in and out of the design. This tool works by clicking the mouse button and then moving the mouse up or down to zoom in or out. Move the mouse up and the software will zoom out. Move the mouse down and it will zoom in. The Fit All button will fit the media page within the preview window. The Fit Width button will zoom to the width of the media page, fitting it within the preview window. The Grid assists with viewing measurements and designing with accuracy. A simple way of enabling the Grid is to click on the View pull-down menu and click Show Grid. To adjust the Grid pattern, click on the Grid Tool icon at the top right of the screen. This action will display the options in the side panel to adjust the grid pattern. Spacing determines how much space is between the grid lines. Divisions sets the number of grids before a darker grid line appears. This aids in finding the dimensions of objects. Show Grid turns the grids on and off. Snap to Grid will force objects to conform to the grid's cross points. This is especially helpful when an object needs to conform to a specific shape or measurement. For instance, let's draw a rectangle with Snap to Grid turned off. First, let's select the Rectangle tool, and then draw a rectangle. We'll click on the first point and drag the rectangle shape to where we want. Now, let's turn Snap to Grid on and draw a similar rectangle. Notice that now it sort of snaps to each crosshair. GraphTech Studio has two types of grid patterns, the traditional square grid and the isometric grid. The isometric grid provides for a 3D appearance. Color provides a selection of grid colors. All these different grid styles are useful for drawing your designs in order to provide you a reference for measurement as you draw.